Assalamu alaikum. I'm Aisha Hussain from BS Physics and the topic assigned to me for presentation is chemistry of shoe polish. We'll see shoe polish, a little introduction of shoe polish, its usage, general properties, composition of shoe polish, its toxic effects on our body toxicology, a general manufacturing method of shoe polish, its different three types and alternatives of shoe polish. The first is shoe polish. Shoe polish is a substance we all have used in our college life and in our school life on a daily basis. And we know it's a waxy paste, a cream or a liquid. We apply it with a rag or a, a cloth or a brush on our waterproof leather shoes and boots to extend the footwear's life and restore, maintain and improve the footwear appearance. And they give them a polished shine and a glossy look, All right? Shoe polishes are distinguished by their texture which range from liquids to hard waxes. Uh, mostly shoe polishes contain a solvent, waxes and colorants, all shoe polishes. The polish is generally the same color as the shoes. It will be used upon and it may be neutral, lacking any coloring agents. Like we know uh, it's, uh, there is black shoe polish for black shoes and brown colored shoe polish for brown shoes. And there is also a neutral shoe polish that can be applied on shoes of any color. Here is uh, shoe polishes. Kiwi is a brand, the first one. Uh, this is a neutral shoe polish. We can apply it on uh, our shoes of any color. This one is a black shoe polish for black color shoes. And this one, it's a liquid shoe polish. Uh, it has a sponge on the top of it. And uh, that one is applicator. It's pre-soaked in the uh, shoe polish and it is very easy to apply on our shoes. Usage, shoe polish, it's uh, applied on the shoes using a rag, a cloth, a brush, or we can use it with bare fingers. Second point, shoe polish, it's basically, it's only used to uh, give our shoes a shiny look, a new look, a glossy look, and it's not a cleaning product, okay? So we have to clean and dry our shoes before applying it. Third one, a vigorous rubbing action to apply the shoe polish evenly on the boot, followed by the further buffing with a clean dry cloth or a brush, really provides very good results. Second one, it's a technique known as pit polishing or boot polishing involves gently rubbing shoes into a leather with a cloth and drop of water or spit. This action achieves a mirror-like high gloss finish, sometimes known as pit shine or bull shine, which is specially valued in military organizations. In this technique, we have to apply shoe polish and a little drop of water or spit on our shoes. Water is even better. And we have to rub it on it and it will give us very good results. Shoe polish may be purchased pre-soaked in hard sponge which can be used to buff leather without needing to apply any additional polish to either the leather or the sponge. This is usually known as applicator. Uh, like we discussed it in our liquid shoe polish, this is that case. Here are the general properties of shoe polish. The first one is gloss. It should be glossy as it forms the basis for the decorative and protective properties of the polish. The main purpose, purpose of shoe polish is its decorative purpose. It, it will give a gloss, a shine, uh, to our shoe polish, a polish, and it will give them a new look. So glossy, it's one of the main properties of shoe polish. Quick drying, it should dry quickly because the precipitation of dust on the polish surface occurs when there is a low drying rate. If the shoe polish will not dry quickly, uh, the precipitates dust particles from the air, they will stuck on our shoes and uh, they can also ruin our dress, anything that will touch our shoes. So a shoe polish must be quick drying. Thin layer formation, it uh, serves as a barrier between the polished surface and the moisture filled with the environment decorated. The polish must look smart and decorated. Composition. We'll discuss the ingredients that will be included on shoe polish. The ingredients that are uh, mixed together in a different manufacturing method and that gives us shoe polish. Shoe polish consists of a waxy colloidal emulsion a substance compared of number of partially immiscible liquids and solids mixed together. It is usually made from ingredients including some or all of naphtha, lanolin, turpentine, wax, often carnauba wax, gum arabic, ethylene glycol, and if required a colorant, such as carbon black or an azo dye, such as aniline yellow. We'll discuss them separately in naphtha. Naphtha is basically a Flammable liquid hydrocarbon mixture, mixtures labeled naphtha has been produced from natural gas condensates, petroleum distillates, and the distillation of coal tar and PET. Naphtha is basically our hydrocarbon. 
uh, their main purpose is that they can uh, the main purpose is that uh, they evaporate quickly they are volatile and when they evaporate quickly their substance in which they are used it will help them to dry quickly the second one is lanolin lanolin it's a hydrophilic grease from the wool bearing animals such as sheep or goat acts as both a waterproofing wax and a bonding agent giving the shoe polish its greasy feel and texture it also prevents naphtha from evaporating until the polish has been spread and buffed into a thin film on the leather surface the next is turpentine turpentine is a fluid obtained by the distillation of resin harvest, harvested from the living trees mainly pines wax wax is included from different uh, natural and synthetic purposes uh, wax, uh, wax is obtained basically from uh, it's a natural product and it can be made synthetically gum arabic Gum arabic is a substance from the two sub-Saharan species of the acacia tree. It commonly used to increase the viscosity of the product. Ethylene glycol. Ethylene glycol is again it's a hydrocarbon, and if required, if we are not making our neutral shoe polish, then we can add a colorant. And carbon black or an azure dye. These are our colorants. It typically has a specific gravity of 0.8. is negligibly soluble in water and is made of between 65% and 77% volatiles, usually naphtha. Here we have used the term specific gravity. What is specific gravity? Specific gravity, or we can also say it's relative density. It's the ratio of density of a substance to the density of given reference material. Mostly we take water as our reference material. The specific gravity of water is equal to 10. If an object or liquid has a specific gravity greater than water, it will sink in water. And if the specific gravity of an object or liquid is less than water, then it will float on the surface of water. In this case, they have said the specific gravity of the product obtained is 0.8. Means it is less than water and it is negligibly soluble in the water. It will float on the surface of the water. And the product is obtained from 65% and 77% of the volatiles, usually naphtha. Uh, they have a very high level, uh, high level percentage of naphtha. The reason is the high amount of volatile substances means that the shoe polyp will dry out and the harden and harden after application while retaining its shine. An essential ingredient in the shoe polish is a thickener. Without this, the polish would be too runny, making it difficult to use. Without thickener, uh, the polish will start dripping out of the shoes and will make everything very messy. Lanoline, gum arabic, naphtha, we have discussed them. The next is toxicology. We have been using shoe polishes from our child, since our childhood and uh, uh, we are not taking any precaution in, precautions. We even we inhale it, keeping it closer to our nose and uh, uh, it it's, this touch our skin and we don't care. But we should care because shoe polish contain chemicals which can be absorbed through the skin or inhaled. When handling shoe polish, one should ideally wear gloves or stay in well-ventilated area. Shoe polish should also be kept out of the reach of the children and animals. It can stain the skin for a pro-traced period of time and will cause irritation to eye if there is direct contact. The next is the general manufacturing method for shoe polish. Shoe polish can be manufactured in using large wads, reasonably powerful heaters and air conditioners. There is no set method of manufacture, although most methods use pressures of two atmosphere to ensure the naphtha doesn't boil off and the temperature of up to 85 degrees Celsius. The first step, the first step in the manufacture of typical shoe polish is the melting of the wax with the highest melting point in the electric heater. Following this, all of the waxes are added, usually by descending order of melting, melting point. Whilst this wax is held at a high constant temperature, the emulsion, a mixture of various oils and fats, is then heated separately at around 85 degrees Celsius. Next, the heated emulsion is then added to the waxes along with distilled water. First, we heated our waxes, then we heated our emulsion, and now we have added this both along with distilled water. When the mixture reaches around 80 degrees Celsius, turpentine oil is added. This mixture is then mixed and continually stirred for half an hour. Dyes are added and mixed in turpentine oil if it is not a neutral polish. Of course, dyes are added if it's not a neutral polish. And if it is a specific color uh, polish, we'll add specific dyes. The mixed mass is reduced slowly to 50 degrees Celsius. And as its viscosity increases, it is poured through a closed funnel into a cooling chamber. The pore mass is allowed to settle down slowly, providing uniform distribution. The process is considered straightforward and the required equipment is relatively easy to acquire. After manufacturing, we'll see its packaging. Shoe polish is traditionally packaged in flat, round, 60 gram, two ounce tins. 
usually with an easy open facility. Why is that? Because the amount of shoe polish that needs to be applied is small and the shoe polish will desiccate due to the volatile ingredients such as naphtha. A large container would dry out before being fully used. And the traditional flat round patterns have since become synonymous with the shoe polish. Now we'll discuss its types. There are three different types of shoe polish. The first one is wax based, second cream emulsion, and the third one is liquid shoe polish. Each type differs in detailed composition, but all of these consist of a mixture of uh, waxes, solvent, and dyes. The first is wax based shoe polish. Waxes, organic solvents and dyes compose this type of polish. As it is clear from its name, waxes, can, waxes make up most of the material. Waxes are 20 to 40% of the material. Natural waxes include carnauba and mountain, as well as synthetic waxes are also used. The composition determines the hardness and polishing properties of the solvent has evaporated. Solvents are selected to match the waxes. About 70% of the shoe polish is solvent. A variety of solvents are used, including naphtha, Turpentine, although it is more expensive than naphtha, is favored for its shoe polish to do. Uh, dyes make up the final two to three percent of the polish. A traditional dye is negrosine, but other dyes, including azo dyes and pigments, are also used for oxblood, corduan, and brown polishes. Owing to its high content of volatile solvents, wax based shoe polish hardens after application while retaining its gloss. The second type, cream emulsion shoe polish. These polishes may have a gelatinous consistency. They are composed of the usual three components, waxes, liquid vehicle, and dyes. Unlike wax-based shoe polish, cream emulsion contain water or oil plus a solvent, either naphtha, turpentine, or stardard solution. So the liquid content is high. Wax, is, uh, wax shoe polish is basically, uh, it's, heavy, it's thick in texture. Cream is less and the liquid is a complete liquid solution. So in cream emulsion shoe polish, the level of wax, the content of wax is lower than wax based shoe polish. Emulsifiers and, in, emulsifiers and surfactants are required. What is basically an emulsifier? Emulsifier is addictive, which helps two liquids to mix. Emulsifier, for example, uh, when we're gonna add water and oil, they will not mix up and give us a solution but we will add emulsifier to mix this both and it will give us a solution. So emulsifier is an additive which helps to liquid mix and surfactants. These include ammonia, morpholine and various ethoxylated surfactants such as polysorbate 80. These emulsifiers are added in our cream emulsion shoe polish. The waxes are often some mixture of carnauba wax, base wax, mountain wax and is oxidized derivative and paraffin wax. Liquid shoe polish. Liquid shoe polish is sold in squeezable plastic bottles with a small sponge applicator at the end. To decrease its viscosity, bottle shoe polish really has a very low wax content. Liquid shoe polish is a complex mixture. Polythene wax emulsion is a major component. Various polymers, typically acrylates, are the next major components, comforting glass and holding the dyes in suspension. Resins and casein are selected to ensure adhesion to the leather. Fatty phosphate, esters, emulsifiers, and glycols are also used. Pigments include titanium dioxide for whites and iron oxide for browns. But we have a little disadvantage of liquid shoe polish if we use it continually, continuously for successive days. Like although liquid shoe polish can put a fast shine on the shoes, many experts warn against its long-term use because it can cause the leather to dry out and crack. Uh, next, here are some alternatives of shoe polish from our daily life products. We can use them instead of our shoe polish. And we can also say these are the hacks we can use. The first one is banana peel. This one is a little unique, but it works. Take the banana out of the peel and rub the inside of the peel onto your shoes. Afterward, wipe off all the excesses with either a soft cloth or a tissue. Then don't forget to buff with the clean cloth so the shoes are even shinier. It gives, it gives better results. The second one is body lotion. Any type of body lotion can be rubbed and it doesn't take a lot of body lotion. Uh, put it on a small cotton ball and rub it on your shoes and dry them. It will give better results. Coconut oil. Like other types of oil, leather shoes respond best when you dab a little coconut oil onto a piece of cotton and then rub it on your shoes. Soap solution, dip the sponge on the soap solution and rub your shoes clean. Paraffin, we can also sprinkle 
a little bit of paraffin on her shoes and scrub it with a soft cloth. Next is olive oil. Olive oil, olive oil we mostly used in our kitchens and it will be ex um, an expensive option, but we can use them. We can, uh, we can dab a little bit of olive oil, oil in a piece of cotton and then rub it on our shoes. The last one is, the uh, second last is petroleum jelly. Petroleum jelly has been used for decades to give shoes a great shine, but uh, uh, now different shoe polishes are available and they give our shoes better results. We should uh, apply shoe, uh, petroleum jelly first on our older leather shoes and then we can check its result and then apply on our newer shoes. Last one is lip balm. If uh, we have half used lip balms hanging around, here's something we can do with them. Instead of throwing them out, just put a touch of lip balm on your shoes and rub a soft cloth. After that, take a clean soft rag and rub the shoes again until we get the shine we want. So these are some hacks, some alternatives of the shoe polish. And that is all for me. Thank you so much. Allah Hafiz.